The success of the annual startup of any oil appliance depends on another annual event, the annual servicing of the heating system. This volume of the video training library will take you through the annual servicing. It's based on the way the industry pros do it and makes use of the latest methods and instruments to make the job fast and easy. Speaking of instruments, here are some of the ones you'll need, accurately calibrated and in good repair before you start the job. These pump testing gauges include a pressure gauge from 0 to 300 psi and a vacuum gauge from 0 to 30 inches mercury. These combustion test instruments measure CO2 or oxygen, smoke, draft, stack temperature, and combustion efficiency. And don't forget a vacuum cleaner, soot snorkels, and flue brushes. Spare parts and supplies that you carry in your truck make up the rest of what you'll need. Begin by examining the appliance and how it's performing before you start. That way you'll spot any obvious problems before you change anything. First, fire test the unit. Observe the fire, noticing its pattern and smoke characteristics. Then turn off the power to the appliance and the oil valve at the burner. Next, remove the flue pipe at the breech and the chimney. Clean it, making sure you follow good housekeeping procedures. Then inspect the chimney for any blockage, brick or mortar damage or moisture damage. Remove any obstructions and report any needed repairs on your service log. Prepare to clean the secondary heat exchanger by removing the flue collector box or the clean-out plate. You may have to remove baffles. Use a flue brush to scrub the secondary heat exchanger passages. If there are secondary clean-out ports, use these to remove as much accumulated scale as possible. Notice that the job is easier and cleaner if you use a vacuum cleaner snorkel in the flue passages and a good respiratory mask, changing the mask filter frequently. Next, clean the combustion area through the viewport or fire door. You may have to remove the burner and front plate. Some view doors can be used for reaching inside with a flue brush or a soot snorkel made from drain hose or common garden hose wrapped with duct tape to act as a bushing. Use the snorkel to remove any soot buildup from the chamber floor. Be very careful not to damage any surface of a soft fiber chamber or relined chamber. Reinstall the flue pipe, replacing any damaged sections. Fasten the stack joints with sheet metal screws and seal any leaks or cracks with gaskets, furnace cement, or other suitable sealant. Now is the ideal time to clean the combustion head. Before replacing the burner, check the gasket, making sure it's intact, then put the burner back in its original insertion. If you're working on a furnace, remove the blower compartment cover. Check the air filter and replace or clean it as needed. Clean the blower wheel. Check the blower V-belt tension and adjust it if it's loose or replace it if it shows wear. Check its alignment. Oil the motor and bearings on the blower shaft. Finally, check the blower mountings and replace any worn ones to prevent noisy operation. If you're working on a boiler, check the circulator coupling for wear and oil the circulator motor and bearing assembly. Begin the burner service by removing the pump strainer cover and cleaning if necessary. Remove the strainer gasket, clean it, and put it back in place. Do the same with the oil filter canister. Remove the canister, then open the tank valve to check if oil flows freely. Poor flow could indicate a blockage in the supply system. Any accumulation of sludge or water in the canister tells you to check the tank for a possible problem. Replace the oil filter with a new one and tightly seal the canister, using a new gasket if needed to assure an airtight seal. Lift the transformer to remove the firing assembly. Disconnect the discharge line from the pump by loosening and removing the knurled nut. 
Electrode porcelains and internal tubing should be cleaned with an appropriate solvent. Examine insulators for cracks and replace if necessary. Replace the nozzle with an equivalent size and type. Tighten the new nozzle using a wrench around the adapter hex at the base and another wrench around the nozzle hex. Do not over tighten or damage might occur. Set the electrodes following the manufacturer's instructions or by using a T gauge. A distance of 1 8 to 5 30 seconds of an inch between the electrode tips is called for in this instance. The tips are positioned 1 16th of an inch forward of the face and 7 16th of an inch above the center line. Examine the combustion head and make sure it's free from any carbon or lint. Reinsert the firing assembly back into the burner. Inside the transformer, clean the bushings and springs. Also, clean the CAD cell surface and check the bracket alignment for good flame sighting. Clean the air inlets of the burner using a small brush and vacuum cleaner snorkel. Then, pull the motor and clean the blower vanes. Oil the burner motor with three or four drops of SAE 20 or 30 oil, unless it is permanently lubricated. All wiring should be examined for secure connections and insulation breaks or cuts. You can also test the pump pressure by inserting a pressure gauge on the pump discharge tubing. Set it for 100 PSI or as specified by the manufacturer. Turn on the power and pump a full quart of oil through the fuel unit, watching for any frothing, which indicates air in the fuel line. Catch the oil in a suitable container. During this bleeding, check the safety lockout timing. Check the cutoff. When the fuel is cut off, the pressure should drop to approximately 80 PSI and hold. Bleed the line again until there is no air in the fuel. Remove the gauge. Then reconnect the fuel discharge line. And reset the primary control by pressing the reset button. Fire the burner. Use a flame mirror to check any flame impingement that could cause carbon to form on the chamber walls. You're now ready for combustion testing. Look through the viewport at the flame. Adjust the air control on the burner until just a few smoky tips are visible. Start with the draft measurement made over the fire. Calibrate the draft meter. Then take a reading. A reading of minus 0 0.02 inches water column is typical and was the setting in this instance. Next, measure the stack draft. You may need to drill a quarter inch hole for sampling between the draft regulator and the boiler flue outlet. In this instance, the overfire draft reads minus 0 0.03 inches water column. Now, measure the smoke using the smoke pump tester in the flue sampling hole. The smoke density scale on this card shows the levels of smoke in gray squares. You want your smoke sample to show just a slight trace of smoke, which is midway between zero and one on the density scale. You may have to adjust the air control to achieve this smoke reading. The ideal reading is zero, which will allow for adverse conditions that may occur before the next annual inspection. Your next test will measure the carbon dioxide or oxygen percentage of the flue gas. In this case, we've chosen the CO2 analyzer and begin by inserting the probe into the sampling hole in the flue pipe. The CO2 in this case is 13%. Open the air control on the burner until the CO2 level is reduced to 12%. The 1% reduction represents a margin of reserve air to assure that the burner will perform reliably under the variable conditions encountered over the heating season. Consider a 2% margin if the first CO2 reading was 14% or more at the trace of smoke level. Check the smoke level again 
by taking another sample with a smoke pump tester. There should be a zero reading on the filter paper. To determine overall combustion efficiency of the appliance, start by inserting the thermometer in the hole in the flue pipe to take a stack temperature reading. Using the stack temperature and CO2 readings, find the efficiency percent on a standard efficiency chart for number two fuel oil. To check boiler safety and auxiliary controls, remove the power from the circulator motor. Then cycle the burner. The safety limits should turn the burner off. Drain enough water from the boiler to lower the pressure by 5 to 10 pounds. The automatic fill valve should function to replace the water. You can check a steam boiler for low water cutoff in the same way, using the blow-off valve. Verify the water level at the sight glass. To check the pressure relief valve, raise the spring-loaded stem, releasing water from the boiler. After you've checked to make sure that the installation is up to current code, clean the area. While you're doing this, complete the final system checkout by observing one complete burner operation cycle. Be sure you set the Aquastat operating level to where it was when you began. Wipe all oil from the unit and floor. Spray oil odor neutralizer on any places where oil has spilled. Give one last check of the oil fittings for any leaks. Return thermostat settings to where you found them. Finish by signing your work with a service label. Fill in the service log. Note particularly any unusual findings or needs for future repair and call them to the homeowner's attention. Then, go on to your next location with the satisfaction of a job well done. This video training library is provided as a service to the oil heat industry, brought to you by R.W. Beckett Corporation.